Hey everybody, today I am here with Marshall Poole, who is a senior physician recruiter at a local health organization, which will remain nameless. But this is the video to watch if you are in the season of job acquisition, because you are gonna get all the insider information about how hiring is done. The process of recruiting, hiring, what resumes, tips and tidbits they're looking for, interview strategy stuff. So this, this is the secret weapon, my friends. So you're gonna to wanna to watch this one. If we haven't met yet, my name is Bree. I'm an RN, NP mentor, interview strategist, content creator, and educator. Welcome to the channel. Okay, Marshall, so you are a physician recruiter, but I know you do much more than that. So why don't you just tell us kind of what you do? Well, I started 32 years ago, 1991. But we, um, I started out doing uh, agency work and mm. um, got into permanent and then locums and then C-suite, executive health care. Yeah. Ended up coming here 15 years ago in Atlanta um, and um, been recruiting physicians and providers ever since. That's been your whole career is just yeah. recruitment. Well, yeah, I was in Hartford Insurance for a while. Yeah. I feel like, so do you work under the umbrella of HR? Is that who you're incorporated with? Actually, or? no, actually we're not, we're separate from HR. So, we're, okay. which is kind of nice actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like you're kind of almost like the marketing department of yeah. the, the system. You know, you're the face of the organization. You got to go out and get people and sell them. Uh, that is a hard skill. I am learning with my new business little venture. Uh, marketing is a whole nother skill set that not a lot of people have. So you're involved from the whole process, like start to finish in like tr finding new people, going out and getting them, bringing them in, setting them up, interviewing. Are you involved on the back end with any of the negotiation strategies? Yeah, it's, um, you know, we start from ground zero. They give us what they call a requisition number and it says, mm -hmm. I want to recruit, you know, this APP for critical care and we want it to be this and that and so we go out with our little ads and put them mm -hmm. out in places and and then we start searching and okay. um, of course we let people like you that are already working know about it and that you know hopefully you can help us too yeah um, but everything from finding the person to call them on the phone and it may be morning day noon or night mm -hmm. um, you know then uh, qualifying them to give to you guys. We go through probably, I don't know, hundreds, thousands of CVs uh, or imagine. resumes. Um, wow. And before they even reach you guys yep. uh, to talk to. And we will, you know, try to clarify everything for them, make sure they're good and clean. And of course, before they can interview, they have to do background checks and mm -hmm. all those kind of things. Um, and then once they do interview, if everybody likes them, then we, you know, get the references. And then we'll, um, once the references are good, then we do an offer letter. Okay. And the offer letter starts. If they like that, then we do the contract. Mm -hmm. And uh, most specialties are pretty streamlined. So legal does touch it um, initially, but we kind of have that a leeway of working with the contracts that legal is not in every single contract. Yeah, you're kind of the liaison in the middle. You want to yeah. keep everybody happy and together and on the same team yeah. so nobody wants to back out on either yeah. end. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to have so many questions and so many different thoughts here. So I'm going to try and keep it like, let's do start to finish. Yeah. So you are a physician recruiter, but you recruit more than physicians. So you do all types of APPs. Yes. All APPs, all um, physicians. Uh, we don't do nurses. We don't do staff. We just mm -hmm. do, you know, the provider part of it, the physician mm -hmm. and APP part. So, um, you know, it's, 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 uh, it, it keeps us busy. We have more searches this year than we've ever had. Really? Um, it's just exploded really since COVID has gotten a lot worse. Um, you, as far as vacancies? Well, some, yes. Some people want to stay where they are because of COVID. Some people want to leave from where they are because of gotcha. COVID and they're ready to go somewhere else. So there's just a lot um, more movement. Yeah, a lot more movement. I see. I see. And do you, in regards to like percentages of how much work you do, would you say you spend more time trying to recruit physicians or more try and time trying to recruit APPs? Uh, for me, uh, we have four recruiters in our group. So mm -hmm. for me, it's more physicians. Mm -hmm. um, and then, I'd, of course, probably... A third, it's probably two thirds physicians and a third APPs. Okay, I mean, okay. Um, but it can be, you know, 50 50 or whatever. And do you have certain specialties that you do, or you do all of them? Yeah, I've, um, I've done all of them over the years, but right now, the way we have it broken up is I do mostly inpatient, mm -hmm. so critical care, orthopedic, or, or, ortho trauma, um, trauma, uh, hospitalist. Mm. Um, I don't do ID or some of the other ones, but also outpatient wise, I do 
the harder ones, psychiatry, neurology, mm -hmm. urology, and outside orthopedics. So, okay. Um, What's the hardest specialty to fill? Right now, it's been uh, psychiatry and neurology. Okay, I knew you were going to say neurology yeah. because if it takes nine months to get an appointment with a neurologist, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah they are, there are not a lot of people who do that, yeah. are there? Is there a difference in the way that you recruit for APPs versus physicians? Not really. Um, you know, you basically come up with the idea of what you need and then do the ads, um, get the information out to folks, um, whether it's practice link, practice match, um, maybe through societies that are available for those specialties. Uh, actually, one of my favorite APP um, sites just shut down tomorrow. Well, it's just down tomorrow called Simply Hired. Oh, really? Um, I got notice of a, like, a couple weeks ago that it was shutting down, and so they're referring everybody to Indeed. Okay. Um, which so, is kind of a big, like, yeah. everybody's on yeah, there. Yeah, it's kind of huge. And uh -huh. so I like the Simply Hard is more specialized. But, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we just, you know, I call it a shotgun or a poacher, really. You just kind of shoot it out yeah. there, make sure everybody knows about it. And then folks that are, again, already working that are connected and want to be part yeah. of it recruitment process are a big help. Yeah, word of mouth I think is everything. Yeah, that's great. And that kind of segues into another question I have, which I think a lot of um, nurses who are becoming NPs and have never worked in this role are unfamiliar, but I would say most NP jobs are hired from within, from word of mouth. Positions that are listed on Indeed and Glassdoor and all of that, those are that's a very small tidbit of the iceberg that you're seeing there. Mm -hmm. The majority of the positions that are open are never even posted because yeah. it's just word of mouth. Like we know a position's coming up, we know a new grad is coming mm -hmm. out, or a, a p person in another specialty wants to switch over, and we know them already. Mm -hmm. We've already vetted them. That's the ideal way to do it. Um, so having said that, um, I, you've told me a little bit about the sites that you like on your end. Do you are the are there specific sites that you would recommend NPs go to or some that you think are not so good about um, as far as presenting jobs that are available to them or filtering them out? For me, I think the best is Practice Link. Um, it has a lot on there. Of course, Simply Hard did. Um, but the, the hospital web, if you know where you want to go, if mm -hmm. you know an area and you say, okay, I'm going to pinpoint that and pick that area, then go to the hospital website. Yeah. Um, yes. That, that is another strategy that mm -hmm. I do talk to people about is that literally just go to the hospital systems. You'll see stuff posted there yeah. that is not on yeah. the broad like platforms. Yeah. And the other thing too is, you know, like you said, I mean, people you know, people you do rotation with, mm -hmm. um, those are the best referrals yep. too because you've already kind of done a working interview yep. through your rotation. Yep. And they know you already and they say, hey, I want this person. So mm -hmm. that's a great way to get through. But I know. Really networking is, like you said, word of mouth is the best. I love that. See, he's just here. I didn't tell him to say any of this. I swear I didn't. He just, this is just the truth. I tell you guys the truth, but I harp on this all the time that the best, the single best job source is clinicals. That is a working interview. So network, even if the people that you're doing clinicals with don't have a position, somebody in another specialty may, and they may say, Hey, I got a great student for you here. You always want to be on your A game when you show up to clinicals, y'all. The other thing I tell people when they're doing rotations is, and this is something I see commonly, and I want to talk about resumes in just a little bit, but um, on resumes that I get from clients, it is very rare that they will put the name of the preceptor they were with. And I'm like, if you guys would spend more time on each single rotation and show me a little bit more detail about what you did, yes. who the preceptor was and their number, because that is the best referral person you have. Yeah. Yep. And I always tell them, like, if you, when you're finishing a rotation, if you got a good vibe with a preceptor, have them write a, a sentence, even if it's just a sentence or two mm -hmm. about you. And you can put that in a portfolio. You can put that on the calling card I talk about so much. But that is the best reference you can possibly get. So don't sleep on that opportunity, guys. I want to talk a little bit about the market for APPs. So we're in the southeast. We're in Georgia. There is a dearth of opportunities inpatient-wise for APPs. And when there is one position that comes open, a lot of people yeah. apply, a lot of applicants. Are you seeing that as well on your end? Yeah, it's um, it's been, you know, for me it's been really good because you do get a lot of applicants. Um, mm -hmm. What I've seen over the last several years is the FNPs has been a glut of FNPs. Yes. And they're like begging please let me work in patient and we just can't, um, yeah. unfortunately in our system. Um, but it's, you know, I've seen a lot of folks too that are now doing the double, yep. FNP, ACNP, mm -hmm. um, 
than to get both of them because that makes you more marketable. Mm -hmm. But um, that seems to be more of the trend now. So uh, I do want to talk about this for a minute because this is something I talk about a lot too. So the FNPs that are coming to you, are they people who like were working in clinic or they're new grad FNPs or why are they wanting to come in the hospital with the FNP? Usually it's people that have been doing it. Yep. And it really stinks, but you know, they got the FNP and they've been working in critical yep. care for 20 years. Yep. This is what we can do. I know, y'all, I cannot tell you how often this happens. I would say 90% of the nurses that I know that work in a hospital setting, and I'm mostly ICU, but I know a lot. If you work in a hospital setting and you go to get your FNP certification, you have to understand what you're taking on with that. You are looking at an outpatient okay. role. Yep. And if you're not happy working five days a week, eight hour days, probably on a minimum, this may not be the role for you, but a lot of people are just burnt out by the the long shifts in the hospital, the weekends and the holidays, and like, I'm just ready for a change. But if you don't really consider the relationship that you're having with a patient, because that's what it's all about, are you gonna get satisfaction from the type of patient care that you're delivering? Um, and 90% of them think they will, and they don't. <laughs> I mean, some people love the same patient all the time and creating that relationship, and they're but other people think it's redundant and it's boring yeah. and they want to see that you know excitement and that yeah. acute care. Yeah. So, you know, it's yeah. what you like. And he's right, in Georgia, FNPs are pretty much across the state now. Mm -hmm. We're following this lace consensus where they don't come in the hospital. I just talked to a girl in California where FNPs are all in the hospital. In South Dakota, they're all in the hospital. So it's yeah. very region specific, but eventually, eventually things will all catch up mm -hmm. and you'll need to have your specialty. Like I can't work in primary care without an FNP. You can't work in the hospital without an, uh, an acute care. And it's eventually going to get pretty strict about that. But for right now, there are pockets where you can still do that. Um, it's kind of like back when I started, we had doctors that were general practitioners. Yeah. You know, and they yeah. did everything. Delivered the babies, fixed the broken bones, yep. did whatever. And now, you know, everything's specialized it and is. certified. And yeah, it if you is. don't have the certification, you're not any good. You know? I know. And it really sucks because, I mean, it's good and it's bad, right? It gets you really, really good at the one or two things that you do, but it eliminates a lot of other options for you. So it's just a challenge of specializing, but this is kind of what we do. These are human lives. So it's important that you get good at one specific thing. Yeah. What would you guesstimate? Like, so if a critical care APP position comes up, how many people do you think apply for that? Oh, wow. Um, again, like I said, we get a ton of applications. Some of them I weed out immediately, just aren't qualified. Um, mm -hmm. Some you have to kind of give them a call and talk to them further. Um, for every search we have, I would say there's probably. 20, 25 applicants, maybe yeah. more, depends on the search. Mm -hmm. Narrow that down to probably three, four, five interviews gotcha. at the most. Do y'all um, utilize the ATS to, or do you weed them out? You look at every resume that yeah, comes in the door? Everything. Okay. Yeah. So you don't set any specific parameters no. about what can. And then the other question I have is, do you guys screen, so for new grad APPs that have no experience, do you look at the school Oh yeah, look at the school, look mm -hmm. at what they've been doing, look at where, where their rotations were. If they, if they had an elective, what was their elective in? You know, mm -hmm. what Did they concentrate on something? Did they Were they very interested in something to do that as an elective? Yeah. Um, those kind of things. And, and look at the whole resume. I mean, you know, were they a manager at Longhorn? I mean, were mm -hmm. they have people skills? Were they yeah. an Eagle Scout? I mean, all kinds of things um, yeah. to look at in the resume to see yeah. what kind of person they are. How much weight do you think the school carries? Because one thing that we see in the NP world is that our, our training is not regulated well. Yeah. So we have a lot of like diploma mills, schools that are really just yeah. get your degree fast. It's not really considered highly reputable. Um, I know from my training and the different organizations I work for, most places said if we see this school, we throw it away. We don't even look at it. Do you find that as well? Yeah, or? I, I, I try to look at the whole CV. And, mm -hmm. and I mean, but this, there's certain schools that do show up Mm -hmm. on a regular basis I'm like well you know yeah, it's in probably, bode well they but probably never went in or whatever but uh, yeah I'll let I'll let the the team kind of decide kind of decide yeah. what they want to do and what kind of you know who they want so yeah 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 okay and then the other question I have about resumes is um the ver I see all types of resumes so I know you you see a lot more than I do but I see probably five or six a month and yeah. it's kind of all over the map and what I see and what people choose to put on there are there particular things like red flags that stand out in a resume that you say, mm, this is probably a no-go? Um, first of all, it's got to be chronological for me. Mm. I mean, education, 
where you went to school, list all that out. You know, it, what they've done for work, what they've done as far as research or abstracts or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I don't need a 25-page CV. If yeah. I get a 25-page CV, I tear mm -hmm. off the first three pages and use that yeah, and yeah. put the rest away because yeah. I don't want to see all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it does matter what it looks like, um, you know. So I get some CV, resume CVs that don't have a phone number or an email on them. That's crazy like, to me. Really? I mean, that's crazy to me. Know. Like, you just throw this together in 30 seconds yeah. and send it out. Like, I'd love to call you, but you know, mm -hmm. I don't have a number. <laughs> um, and some people, like, you know, I tell people when I do talks, I mean, don't do, don't put on your social security number, don't put on your birth date, don't put a picture on there. Mm. Uh, just make it nice and clean. Yeah. Bullet points. Yeah. Um, but make it enough information to where it's, it's the right stuff. Credible and it's mm -hmm. good. Um, mm -hmm. So. Um, but yeah, it's, you can pretty much pick up a resume and say, no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when you look at so many of them, yeah. you get pretty darn good at weeding through them. I'm also very aesthetic. I like when things are very clean and yeah. concise. I don't, you know, I was told when I was finishing NP school to try and keep it to two pages. I know some yeah. schools will say one page. I don't know that the page count, unless it's like you said, like 25 pages yeah. is excessive. But um, I don't know that, that matters so much as long as the information is the right yeah. information in the right spots. If it's one page, sometimes I'm like, well, what have they done? You know? Yeah. Two pages usually gives you a little more information, it mm -hmm. seems like. But I guess it really doesn't matter. It's the person and what the mm -hmm. content is. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the font's got to be the same. You can't be messing around. Yeah. And I get some of these that have really broad bands of different colors on them and and this takes all the ink out of my printer. Mm -hmm, so. mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, really? So, yeah. Um, and my other pet peeve is if it's not PDF, it's got to be PDF formatted yeah. because then if I print it out and it's a Word doc and it's not formatted right, it's a jumbled mess. Yeah. Make sure it's a PDF. Yeah, please. Please. The other thing you had mentioned one time in an interview that I thought was just so insightful was uh, making sure that the file name mm -hmm. is appropriate. <laughs> So we get thousands of CVs, you know, and, and mm -hmm. we're looking through them and we save them. I mean, we mm -hmm. put them in our little files underneath the specialty or whoever, and we save them. And if something comes up later, you go, oh, that guy, you know, Bob Smith, you know, I'll go back and find him. Well, if it's under my dad's CV or <laughs> my current CV or critical care CV. Yeah, it's hard to find, find it. Yeah. So I rename all of them, last yeah. name, first name, specialty, yeah. what they're interested in, you know, year. So I have that. Ah, there. that's a good tip. Um, but yeah, and I even suggest, you know, one thing we talked about before too is using a different email. Yes. Um, put a, you know, my, my job email, my, you know, Bob Smith's job, mm -hmm. you know, at gmail.com. And yeah. that way, at least you're not missing good emails that are coming through in your personal stuff. Yep. Um, so if you, I would yep. suggest that too, actually. I think that's actually a great tip. I do this in my personal life. I have a couple of emails because I get spammed so much in my main mm -hmm. one that, important stuff that you're looking for sometimes you miss it gets buried in those hundreds of emails so it's actually and make sure it's a professional named yes. email uh, not hot not girl believe, summer <laughs> yeah you would not believe some of the names of, of um, emails uh -huh. that I get and again you can't remember that person yes so if it has their name in the email you can say okay that's that person and I go yeah. back and find them yeah um, but yeah. If it's just you know yeah. crazy Joe's fish salon I mean you know, you can't I know. pull that up. And I think these are kind of minor things, but honestly, to me, and this is the whole thing, from filling out a resume to completing an interview, the easier you can make it for the people that you're trying to sell yourself to, like the more of a shoe in your world. Like this person is professional, yeah. they're on their A game, mm -hmm. they're organized, they got it going on, they're a good candidate, boom. I mean, it's just an easy sell when everything is organized and lined up well. If you're already thinking through what they're looking for and put yourself in their shoes, is way better. Um, your odds are just better. I want to talk a little bit about interviews. So the, um, I remember doing a phone interview with you eons ago and I had no idea. I had, I mean, I had no idea. You just don't know. I had never done a phone interview as a nurse, so I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. Um, I find that they're generally pretty brief, like 30 minutes or less. It's yeah. more just a fact checking, making sure you're, you know, your goals are aligning with the team's goals, that you want the shift they want, that kind of thing, to see if you're appropriate to put in front of the people yeah. that are interviewing. Is that, yeah. yeah. And for me at this stage, it's a gut check. Um, a lot yeah. of times I can tell over the phone that mm -hmm. it's not the right person. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the phone call is it's brief. Um, I try to make it kind of easy going. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, uh, it's not a drill or anything. We're just talking about the job and mm -hmm. find out if it's something that might match up. Yeah. They might be misinterpreting the ad or what mm -hmm. it is or what, mm -hmm. you know, if it's three twelves or 
seven seven you know, seven on seven off or whatever right make sure they understand you know if it's days or nights or whatever mm -hmm. so yeah just trying to not waste everybody's time yeah. really yeah. yeah have have you ever had things that have happened in a phone interview like that that you were like uh immediately no <laughs> this is not going to work out yeah i mean i mean people fly out and say things they shouldn't say um <laughs> you know they don't mean to it just slips it just slips out, out. the Freudian slips like, oh, oh gosh um but you know things happen it's not that big a deal but mm -hmm. I mean there are some of course you know with zoom and stuff it's like the cat comes across or the dog's barking yeah. and yeah you know those things happen but it's um you know it can be sometimes you know it's sometimes you want to keep the conversation going as the, and you can tell with the phone they're not very sociable person yeah or their social skills aren't that great yeah and you know you just try to keep the conversation going for 20 30 minutes about what you're you know trying yeah. to find them for yeah um some people are over you know, they want to talk a mile a minute. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, slow down, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, you don't need to tell me everything uh -huh. about your life. I find the exact same thing. Um, I do these mock interviews, you know, so I meet people from all over, and the personalities are all over the map. Uh, it's just it's just fascinating to me. If you like psychology at all, it is very yeah. interesting to see what yeah. people do under pressure. Yeah. Uh, it is, it, <laughs> you know, some people you're having to coax more out of them. Um, you know, talking about interviews, like formal interviews, you know, I have a standard set of questions I ask, and I think most people tend to ask. But you get some people who just can they just get paralyzed and they don't give you anything and you have to you have to keep yeah. trying to coax more out of them and they are getting all these leading questions. And then you have the others who just wax pros for hours and you're like, Oh gosh, okay. Yeah, it's and it, it, anybody that's been in medicine <clears throat> long enough, they know that every specialty has its own personality. Yes. So it's like, does this person fit? Yes. You know, we do those personality tests. Yep. And there's one specialty that I have that everybody's in the same quadrant. Mm -hmm. And then one person they hired was over in this quadrant. Yeah. And they didn't last long. Yeah. But, um, you know, I put a whole lot of weight into those things, but mm -hmm. it's just funny to kind of plot it and see, and everybody's over here in this <laughs> one quadrant. But, um, you know, some of those things work, but some of them are just, you know, grain of salt. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah, and it's uh, honestly, I mean, it's so hard, right? Because this is all like a corporate game. And it's just we have limited time to get to know each other. Mm -hmm. And it's so pressurized on both ends. Yeah. We There are plenty of us who do not interview well at all. Mm -hmm. And we don't know the questions to ask. And so then as you, as the interviewee, have to anticipate that and give them what they want. And so it, it is hard to get a feel for people sometimes. Sometimes you have an immediate like reaction that yeah. it's going to be good or bad. But most of the time, I would say it's probably in the middle somewhere. Of like, maybe, I don't know. It's kind of a guess. Yeah. It's kind of a gamble. Well, that's when I suggest <clears throat> shadowing usually. Yes. Um, everybody's yes. on their best behavior interview yeah. day. You know, right. Like, well, <laughs> well. Yeah, not always. But. For the most part, yeah. they are. <laughs> yeah. I've had some really. Yeah, um, I have too. And yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> don't say that again. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, shadowing sometimes give you, it gives you an insight if you spend six, eight hours with a group. Mm -hmm. of what really happens. Yep. Um, not everybody does and everybody wants to, but mm -hmm. sometimes if it's kind of an iffy or a 50 50, I suggest, well, hey, let's just shadow for a day and yeah. see if it's what you think it is. Do you ever feel like, because I get this when I tell people to do this, because I always advise people ask for a shadow day, always. Um, and I'll get a lot of NPs will say, well, I'm nervous to do that. Well, yeah. what are you nervous about? The worst thing can happen is they'll say no. Yeah. Do you, does this strike you as a red flag in any way? Or does that make you cautious when somebody asks for a shadow? No, I think it's a good thing. Yeah. That means they're more interested really yeah. to me. Yeah. I, I think so too. I just need to hear that from a professional. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like, kind of <clears> like <throat> when you come to the interview and you have any questions? No. Yes. I'm that's like, the worst. I'm like, are you serious? It's the worst y'all. This like, is the worst yeah, red I mean, flag of all like, of them. If mm -hmm. you did not research where you're going and you have no questions, that means you're not interested. Yeah. And you're probably not a good candidate. Yeah. And that is that just so every and it still surprises me as people I say know. I have no questions. I I th I really truly think the misconception is that, well, if I say I don't have any questions, it means that I'm supporting them that they've already given me yeah. everything I need. And in reality, it's the total yeah. opposite. Because I always tell people I learn more about them about the questions they ask mm -hmm. than what we ask of oh, them. Yeah. It tells me what if they've already worked in this role that they already understand what the challenges are. So, oh yeah, okay, yeah. she knows that this is going to be a problem in this yeah. role. So it that tells me more than anything you said yeah. previously that you've already worked in this role and you have experience. So I highly encourage questions, even if like where we work, we tend to do a lot of uh, um, groups of interviews over and over mm -hmm. with different groups of people. So you may have already asked that question two times a day yeah. in different interviews, but the person you're interviewing with now doesn't know that you asked it of the person yeah. before. 
ask it. It does get slightly redundant for the candidate because I'm with them all day and, uh -huh. and I hear it again and they're like, oh, Marshall's heard this 10 times uh -huh. already. I'm like, say it's it not again, right. you know, yeah, do yeah. it, say it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, um, you got to ask the questions. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just don't look interested at all if you don't have questions and you've done your research and mm -hmm. you know about the group and even just look at the people's faces on the yeah. website or whatever and say, so I know who these people are. Yep. I mean, yep. That's my trick for like uh, panel interviews or where there are a lot of people in the interview is like, if you like our organization does a really good job of putting who all the invitees are. Mm -hmm. And so that is a wealth of information. Just go like Google them, go figure yeah. out who these, even if you only know their title and their role, yeah. that tells you so much more. And then when there's downtime in between that, yeah. um, because panel interviews get a little awkward sometimes, but if there are awkward moments, you just look yeah. at them and say, Hey, I know that you're the director of blah, blah, blah. What do you like about blah? Yeah. I mean, people love that. They love to talk about or themselves. I see you did this procedure <clears throat> or you mastered mm -hmm. this or do that and mm -hmm. nobody else does this. I mean, tell me about that. Or yep. Whatever. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Show it, a little interest and insight. Yep. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Are there um, big red flags that you can think of that people do in interviews that you're like, oh, that's a very egregious? Well, in history, there's <laughs> been some really crazy ones. Um, I mean, usually we, a lot, at least during our interviews, we always have lunch. Mm -hmm. um, I had a guy one time that ate with his mouth open. Oh. The whole interview. <laughs> And smacked and was this so gross. Oh gosh. I don't, I don't remember what he was, but and you know, and I had another guy who's um, plastic surgeon brought his wife with him because she had definitely done a lot of work on her and oh, was wearing next to nothing. Oh wow. Um, another wow. lady I'll never forget in New Orleans, I was interviewing this guy <clears> and um, had his wife with him. We're in the Marriott, like a I don't know, Marriott hotel in the yeah. open restaurant area. Yeah. She just whips it out and starts breastfeeding her child. <laughs> and I'm trying to keep a straight face. You know, you're like, what is like, happening? You know, what like, is hey, happening here? No, you're trying to keep her involved. Or you're still oh, trying wow. to look and not look like, I'm like, uh, but she had no cover. She had nothing. She just, oh, wow. You know, and I'm like, okay. That is but, really um, awkward. So the, is this a physician thing that, to bring their spouse to interviews? No, it's, it's weird. Sometimes I've had, I've had parents. I've what? Had, I've had residents bring their mom or dad with them. Okay, this is yeah. I, you're blowing my mind right now. Yeah. I had no idea yeah. that it was even an option to bring yeah. a friend, yeah. a plus one to your interview. No, but some, especially some spouses, insist on coming because they want to see everything and be a part of it, and and uh, we just accommodate it. But it's a little weird sometimes. Yeah, when, when I would think. I mean, because also to me, what that says is that your priorities on your spouse, and it should be. We yeah. all know it should be, but in reality, in yeah. a formal interview, it should be us. Yeah. <laughs> you know. You know, you, you have all, you, there's all kinds of people in the world. You have all sorts of mm -hmm. things that happen, but mm -hmm. um, over the years, you just kind of accumulate all those stories. Of, yeah. And it's, it's some crazy ones sometimes. I'll bet you do. You probably have as many good stories as I do from when I worked at Grady in the ER. <laughs> Can you believe this person did that? Driving around, you know, sometimes we have to go to a lot of different hospitals and go to different places and show them things and. Some people just don't really have social skills, and you're like yeah. talking and talking and trying yeah. to get them to talk and trying yeah. to think of. And I'm reading their resume, going, "Oh, they like dogs. Oh, they like this." And I'm yeah. trying to talk about dogs. And yeah, it can be very um, yes. exhausting. Yeah, especially for how much I forget how much time you really spend yeah. with them. I'm only with them for an hour or so, but you're with them for sometimes, sometimes days. From Seven a.m. till ten yeah. p.m. Yeah, that is a lot. So the surgeons want to meet them early, or they want to meet them after mm -hmm. for dinner, or you know, it's just. Mm -hmm. It can be a long day. Mm -hmm. It can be a long day for the candidate, too. Sure, 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 sure. And they're pressured, so they're probably not truly themselves. <laughs> well, I would say most of our interviews are, what, three, four hours? Yeah. On average. Yeah. Um, I, and that is, so it's interesting when I talk to people across the country, some of them will have very long interviews mm -hmm. like that, very similar to how we structure ours, where it's different groups of people yeah. throughout the day. Um, a lot of places, it is just a one-time virtual interview um, with a lead, no physician involved, and boom, you're hired. I mean, it's kind of all over the map on what people do. Yeah. And you're also, it's going to also be all over the map as far as how structured it is. I've done interviews as an NP where it was specific people. They had a list of questions. They always ask the same questions. It's highly organized. You know, where for my team, how we are, it's kind of off the cuff. Uh, so it, yeah. you know... Again, people interview, some people interview well, some don't. <laughs> yeah, we give, we used, we've tried all different methods, but we try to give this person these questions, this person that questions, yeah. 
but it never works. Yeah. Everybody just asks whatever. Yeah. Um, but it's, you know, they can answer it 10 times. It's just the way it is. Yeah. I mean, it's got to feel a little bit organic because this yeah. is as much, this is a dating, this is a speed dating thing, right? Um, so are there questions in your mind that get asked frequently in interviews or that are better questions to be asked of candidates? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, everybody seems to ask the, is there a, is there a sit time when you solved a problem? Mm -hmm. Was there a time when you had a relation with a physician or another practitioner that was difficult and mm -hmm. how did you remedy that? Um, I think those are good questions. I think they help understand the person and how right. they resolve things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and if, you know, the question, if I asked so-and-so about you, what would they describe yes. you as or how would That is one of my favorites. I mean, you know, it kind of makes people think easy about themselves yep. and what they're like. So I'm always curious, how many people, do you see that candidates will send follow-up emails or thank you emails, conversations, stuff like that? I would say about 50% actually. Really? Thank yous. Um, okay. Actually, I send out a list of everybody they interview with and their emails, mm -hmm. trying to kind of prod them yeah, to, to do that, do that mm -hmm. um, because I think people still like to be thanked. I mean, they do. And there's they their do. time and, and people that actually during the interview, say thank you for your time. I know you're busy today. Yeah. I appreciate your time. But just send that thank you note. And it doesn't have to be long. I mean, just a short thank you mm -hmm. email. It doesn't have to be written thank you note anymore. Just a short email mm -hmm. that says, hey, thanks for your time. And, yeah. you know, I enjoy meeting with everybody. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I try to send that every single interview. And, you know, some people use it, some don't. Yeah, I find it interesting how many people don't. Yeah. Um, uh, to me, it seems like such a simple thing. I thought everybody did. And then yeah. once I started on this side of things, I'm like, it's, I feel like it's rare that I see one come across. Yeah. And it may be that they're just sending it to specific people. Um, but I know when I did mine, every single email I had, I sent one yeah. individually to each one. And I addressed specific things that we may have talked about so they could remember me. I mean, if anything, it's just a reminder. Mm -hmm. Hey, remember me? I interviewed last week. Yeah, I'm really here's great. another question, or here's mm -hmm. something I forgot to answer, you know, or something, you know, when I yeah. got home. Anything like that is just yeah. a little more friendliness, a little more personable. Yep. Um, yep. Than just walking away. I mean, it's like, do you really want this job? To me? Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. I mean, and it, these are all minor things, but again, if nine people or 10 people are interviewing, mm -hmm. you're one of them. And two of them do and you don't, it, it could be the little thing yeah. that makes or breaks it. Yeah. So why wouldn't you take that extra step? Um, yeah. Okay. Well, this has been super helpful. Any other tips, insights, or things you want to share? Um, I would just say, you know, I tell people they, they get kind of nervous about the interview and mm -hmm. I'm just like, just be yourself. Yeah. You know, and it's not a, we're not doing a kangaroo court. We're not going to drill you. It's just a yeah. conversation. It's a conversation. I've had people come out at the end of the day. I mean, even physicians like when do I interview I'm like you just interviewed all day it was just yeah. a conversation yep we're not going to sit here like residency or yep. whatever and drill you in questions mm -hmm. um, it's just to get to know you and you want to get to know with other people right you know, as much as they need to get to know you so right just be yourself I um, agree be honest I think the best thing to calm your nerves is really before you go into it I like to put myself in the position of thinking okay this is a PRN job I don't actually need this so, and if you don't actually need it the pressure comes off and then you can just relax and it is just a conversation between human two human beings they put their pants on one leg at a time just like you do so it, it brings that intimidation factor down to a manageable level i feel like and everybody puts their pants on the same way and don't be you know scared or whatever mm -hmm. um the one thing i definitely if they have time or if you think it's beneficial interview a couple of times for something you really don't even want. Mm -hmm. Just know? get the practice. Just to get the practice in. Mm -hmm. Or if you have friends that can do it with you that are good mm -hmm. at interviewing, um, but just do it and just say, okay, this is what I'm going to go do. It'll take two hours or three hours out of mm -hmm. my life. I'll go mm -hmm. do this for practice. So yeah. when I do get to the one I really want, I'll actually be good at it. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard a lot of candidates that come to me say the same thing. They're like, I've had a bunch and, or some of them have had interviews they bombed that they're really you know, bummed about, mm -hmm. but they've learned so much from it. Yeah. And <clears throat> this is the thing that bothers me as far as, I don't know how medical school is, but as far as NP training, they don't really teach us anything about no. job acquisition. I think we had someone from HR at Emory come mm -hmm. and talk to us about what to put on your resume, yeah. but nobody talks about interview strategy. And I remember when I started interviewing for NP jobs, after I had bombed that mm -hmm. job, you know, that interview as a nurse, I was like, okay, this is a tough market. I cannot afford to yeah. bomb these interviews. And so I started looking into researching, like there's gotta be a way to get better at interviewing. And my husband is the one who was actually like, oh yeah, there's a bunch of books written on it. Yeah. All you gotta do is study it. And I'm like, what? 
and then i started like looking into it and researching it and this is how kind of how i travel down this road it's just so fascinating to me that this is absolutely a learnable skill yeah. it is absolutely even if you're the shyest person in the world there are techniques and things you can do you just have to put a little bit of time and effort into yeah. it but i think most people aren't aware of that and they think it's just you have a skill or you don't yeah. well, you can you can build it it's amazing to me that <clears throat> the programs and schools don't teach no one interviewing and two coding <laughs> oh yeah coding is the worst uh, I mean, don't get me taught don't get taught i still don't know that. how to code <laughs> I mean, that's how you get paid. Mm -hmm. Interviewing is how you get mm -hmm. your job. So, right. I mean, there, it's, it's like it's it's kind of like going to high school, right? You yeah. learn about chemistry, but who teaches you how to balance your checkbook? Yeah, like right. you need to learn how to yeah. live life and how to acquire a job and how to negotiate a contract. And these are basic life skills that nobody teaches. That's why you need mentors like Bree. There you go. You <laughs> I didn't even pay him for that yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> this has been yeah. amazing. This has been the most fun interview yes. ever. Um, so, uh, that's all I got for you. Hopefully you got some great information out of that and good luck on your next job acquisition hunt. <laughs>